country and a pride in the brand in America's heartland living close close to the land It may seem hard to believe, but some of technology's greatest innovations have come right out of the farm. Growers are always looking for new ways to become more efficient, cut costs, and become more environmentally friendly. This latest step in precision agriculture gives farmers a new view from high above their fields. At first glance, it might seem like these guys are simply enjoying a high-flying hobby. In reality, Idaho farmer Robert Blair and University of Washington consultant Dr. Kurt Scudder are involved in what's known as precision agriculture. In this case, using aerial technology to capture video or still photos that can help them assess crop yields and field conditions. A farmer knows his fields. If you can just see a picture of their field, they can gather a lot of information because they've been farming it for so many years. Instead of scouting a field the normal way, walking through or driving a four-wheeler, now we're seeing the whole field and we're being proactive. What wavelengths do you think are the best we should be putting on the bird on a day like today? Most probably it would be somewhere between 750 and 860 nanometer. These lightweight unmanned aerial vehicles or UAVs can complement satellite imagery and provide another benefit. You can actually fly anytime you need it and not worry about the cloud coverage. So that is the most benefit I see from the UAVs. And you can cover a lot of ground in a very short amount of time. Bennett. Robert Blair is a fourth generation Idaho farmer, working land that was first tilled by an uncle at the turn of the 20th century. I've always wanted to farm. I just love it. There's so many aspects and something different every day. And then along comes technology. It's the new frontier. It's something new to learn. And one thing my dad always told me is, if you don't learn something new every day, it hasn't been a good day. You've got to get the chains, you've got to grease it, check the oil. Today, Robert and his family operate a 1,500-acre farm, raising cattle and growing wheat, malt barley, and other crops. Okay, I'm just going to check the voltage on that battery. Okay. UAVs were first developed by the military. Got ailerons, got elevator, got rudder. But Robert and his scientist partner see this technology as important to improving future farming operations. So they've been perfecting an aerial reconnaissance platform with an eye to marketing it worldwide. What I would hope to see is then in say five to 10 years, this is something that is very commonly used and it's no more unusual to see one of these than it would be to see a crop dusting aircraft, which as you can imagine, to farmers of 100 years ago would have been a truly miraculous piece of technology. Okay, clear? Clear. Their rigid foam planes fly a grid pattern feeding field data to antennas linked to remote computers. For a 160-acre field, the aerial survey can deliver observations rapidly. A UAV can cover that in about half an hour, and it covers every square inch. If you go out and were to cover every square inch walking it or driving it, it'd take you hours. And so the cost savings there is quite obvious just in the time. Robert's family sees the potential of impacting agriculture far beyond their Idaho farm. I think it's a pretty exciting one for sure. I have to think that a simple remote control plane like this can help with the productivity of so many different crops. To me, that's just amazing. I can't believe how much one simple remote control plane can do. The two men are also developing a helicopter-like device that they say can be used for smaller fields. We want to look at this as a tool for close-in work, uh, short-range work where we, can, we don't have a, a place to launch and land a fixed-wing aircraft, but we can fly the rotary-wing aircraft. But whatever the device, the men believe these flying machines will allow farmers to become better stewards of the land. When using all kinds of precision agriculture together, combined, 
we get a good picture of what's happening to that crop, to that commodity that goes from my farm to your table. And by using this, it verifies that a farmer is being a farmer, he's being a steward, the original environmentalist. I mean, we're using the technology to not only help our land, but to help future generations be not only successful, but responsible.